Well, it's been quite a day here in the Isle of Man with a press conference with the Chief Minister this morning uh, announcing this multilateral tax agreement, a sort of fat curve for the whole of the G5, maybe G8, even more, who knows. Uh, Richard Murphy is joining me, though, a, a guy who's been well known in the Isle of Man for having strong views about uh, offshores. Shall I put it that way, Mr Murphy? What do you make to it? Look, my view is that this was, in a sense, almost inevitable. Uh, once the UK had decided that it was going to impose its will upon its various territories, the Crown dependencies, of which the Isle of Man is one, and the offshore territories, of which Cayman and the British Virgin Islands and others are part, then it was clear that they were going to demand full cooperation in information exchange. Look at the pressure that's arisen on the UK over the last few weeks. The UK is leading talks at the G8 next month. Those talks are designed to tackle international tax abuse. The kickback has come from Luxembourg, from Austria and from Germany that the problem is not just the banking secrecy that is seen in Switzerland and in Luxembourg, Austria and elsewhere, but also the secrecy that is created within British jurisdictions, including the Isle of Man, which is equivalent to banking secrecy. Now, the equivalent that they talk about is, in fact, a combination of two things. One is trust law, and, of course, trusts are not registered in any of the territories. You don't have to declare on public record that you're running a trust. And secondly, the secrecy that surrounds the ownership and accounts of companies that are registered in the Isle of Man, Jersey, Guernsey, BBI, Cayman, and so on. Once you see that combination of kickback internationally against David Cameron, you know that the reaction is going to be force the Crown dependencies, force the overseas territories into line. And the weapon was already there. FATCA has already been imposed upon the Isle of Man and then in turn Guernsey and Cayman and Jersey. Others will follow on. They're not as important, but they will no doubt follow on in due course. Well, I think the Isle of Man government might say, say that they actually went for FATCA agreement with the UK first. They, they, they joined before they were pushed on that one. Look, I mean, oh, come on. They did not join before they were pushed. I disclosed the discussions last November, and at that point they most certainly were not joining by choice. They were being pushed, and all my sources confirmed that was what was happening. The Isle of Man never leads on these situations, but I give it credit where it's due. The Isle of Man reads the winds better than most other places, most certainly better than they do down in St Helier. And when it realises the game is up, the Isle of Man has a knack of actually looking as though it complies readily, which um, is way beyond the ability of anybody in Jersey. So the Isle of Man always wins the PR advantage on this. I accept that. It does always appear to be more compliant. I accept that too. I also happen to think there probably is a higher degree of compliance in the Isle of Man than in some places. I accept that as well. But the point remains that for all those acceptances, Ger uh, Germany and Luxembourg and Austria, and if we want to go further, Switzerland are right, de facto banking secrecy exists in the Isle of Man. Put together a trust with, frankly, totally compliant local trustees acting in accordance with the wishes of the set law, combined with a nominee company which they may even deny owning, because that's entirely possible in the Isle of Man Company registry for non-beneficial ownership to be, or the beneficial ownership to be hidden. Put that together and you have banking secrecy as bad as you will find in any other tax haven. And that's got to be tackled and that's what this is about and that is why the UK has demanded it. And let's also be blunt, if the Isle of Man had not agreed, and if in due course Jersey and Guernsey don't agree, Cayman has already, by the way, agreed. So here the Isle of Man fell in second behind Cayman. But if the others don't agree, then it will simply be forced on them. The UK has that right. It has always had the right to make sure that legislation is in place in the Crown dependencies to uphold the rule of law and to protect international relationships and the UK's relationships with other powers. And it will do that. And the Isle Man has read the runes, it's followed the um, requirements, and good on it, but let's be honest, the truth will be in the way in which compliance is seen to operate, whether the information is exchanged. Is and to date, the record on that sort of information exchange is very poor indeed. Well, let's just hold it there. We'll continue our chat in our next section.